Hi, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shavastal. And uh, from today's uh, lecture, we are starting with the programming of the queues. In the programming of the queues, we will first discuss about the linear queue. Then we will discuss about the circular queue. Then we will discuss about the various implementation of the priority queues. Towards the end of the series, we will discuss about the double-ended queues, which are uh, being used as a very frequent applications in the computer science. So let's start with the linear queue and its programming. For understanding the linear queue, uh, let's uh, let's start with an example. Let's say this is the this is some queue wherein the people are standing. Let's say the A is the person who has come first, and B is the person who came next, and C is the person who came next to B, and D is the person who came in the last. So we can say that A is in the front of the queue, and I can say that D is at the rear of the queue. Whenever the service will be started, A will get the service first, and then B will get the service, and then C will get the service, and in the end, D will get the service. If a new person is coming, I will insert this person in this queue at this position, meaning that rear is here, and I will update the rear to this and will insert this person E. For implementation of the linear queue using the array, we can take an array of pick size. Let's say we have five elements in the queue. It means the size of the array will be declared as five. And then let's take two pointers. One is front and another one is rear. I'm initializing this front to zero index and I'm initializing this rear to minus one index. We have a formula that can find out the number of elements at any point in time. Let's say the formula is written like the rear minus front plus one. So initially the rear is minus one, front is zero, and the plus one makes it zero. So initially we have zero elements in the queue. Whenever you have to invert an element, you will have to update the rear position. So for insertion of the first element, the rear will be brought to zero from minus one. So I'm just performing a rare plus plus operation and the rare plus plus will bring the rare from minus one to zero. And let's say I'm inserting the first element in the queue that is A index. And to insert the another element, rare will be again insert, uh, updated to one position and the element B can be inserted at two index, similar uh, at one index. Similarly, if I say, if I have to insert one more element, then the rear will be updated to two position and the element can be inserted at two position, let's say that is C. If I have to find out the number of element at this point in time, the rear is at two index, front is at zero index. And if I apply the formula, rear minus front plus one, it will be two minus zero plus one, it means three. You can see that we have three elements in the queue as of now. The size of the queue or the number of elements in the queue can be found by this formula at any point in time. Now let's say we have to delete the elements. You can see that at this point in time, the front is at zero and rear is at two index. The in deletion will take place from the front index. So the front element is deleted and the front is incremented by one. So the first element which is deleted is A and front is incremented by one. After the deletion of the first element uh, at zero index element, we can again delete an element. So the one index element or the front element will be deleted and front will reach to index number two. If I have to delete once again, in that case, the front element will be deleted and front will be updated to three index. So at this point, rare is equals to two, or rare is at a two index and front is at three index. If you want to find out the number of element, you will have to apply the formula, rare minus front plus one. So this is zero. So all the elements which were inserted have got deleted. Hence, the number of element at this point in time is zero. So we have a very good formula for finding out the total number of elements at any point in time. So for implementation of uh, uh, the insertion and the deletion operations in the queue, let's take a structure. So we will first have to declare a structure. And this structure will have three elements or three uh, members one of them will be 
the array in which I can insert the element. And then will be the rare index and then will be the front element or front index. If I say that the element which are to be inserted is of integer type, rare and front will certainly be of integer type because these are the indexes of the array. So I'll have to give some size to this. Let's say the size is 10. It means 10 elements can be accommodated in the linear queue. So this will be the structure. After this, we will have to write the initialize function. If I am writing this initialize function in the form of the algorithm, in that case, I'll say the rare will be initialized to minus one. Front will be initialized to zero. Let's say this is the Q. So this will be Q dot rare and Q dot front. So this is the initialization function. For insertion of any element, if uh, I take uh, this example only, we will have to check about the overflow condition also. If let's say, let's say the overflow is not appearing, then the part of the code can be written as, or part of the algorithm can be written as, this is the NQ algorithm, which inserts an element in the queue. So Q is given and an item X is given, which is to be inserted. And considering that the overflow condition is not appearing, in that case, I will certainly have to in, in, implement this rare pointer by one or rare index by one and add the updated rare position. I'll insert the element X. Fine. Let's take uh, this example and try to understand what the overflow condition is. Let's say the insertion and deletions have been performed as earlier. And then I have a uh, different position pointing at three index and the rare pointer position pointing at the two index, just a minute. And I have to insert a new element here. So for that, the rare will be updated to three index and the element D can be inserted. These ABCD have got deleted. I have inserted this D. Event. And then if I have to insert one more element, then rare will be updated to four position. And then I can insert the element E here. Now, if I have to insert one more element, the insertion of that element in the linear cube will not be possible because the rare has already reached to the maximum index. So if the maximum index has been reached by the rare index, further insertion will not be possible. And this is the condition of the overflow. So let's write this overflow condition in our NQ function. I'm writing this condition separately. So if Q dot rare has already reached to the maximum index, let's say the size of the Q is defined like size. So the indexes that can be reached will be zero to size minus one. And if the rare has already reached to the size minus one index, then the further insertion will not be possible. So if this rare Q dot rare is equal to size minus one, this is the condition of overflow. And in case the queue overflows, I will prefer to exit or I can just return. So if this condition is not true, I will perform this. So if this condition is true, the exit function will be called or the return if I write it, I write return here and this function will terminate. But if not, then we'll directly reach to this place. So writing else is not required here. Fine, so this is the NQ function. And then let's write the DQ function. So the DQ function is also straightforward. DQ means deletion of the element from the queue. So let's say a queue is given. So for deletion of an item, we will have to save the front position element from the queue in some X variable. And then you will have to increment the front index. After this, you will return the return the deleted element that is x. We have made a practice of returning any other deleted element from any other data structure. Hence, I have saved the rare sorry not the rare but the front element. I'm extremely sorry. Here we will write the front element. So we have saved the front element in some x variable, and then we have implemented the rare uh, front position and returned the item at the front index as the deleted element. Now, before the deletion, we will have to check uh, whether the deletion is possible or not. So we will have to find out if there are zero elements in the queue or not. So for finding that, I have a formula. If q dot rare minus q dot front plus one, this is equals to zero. It means we have zero elements in the queue and we are trying to delete a zero, delete an element from the zero element queue. So that will not be possible. That will be the condition of underflow. So Q underflows. 
And in case Q underflows, the deletion will not be possible. You will either exit or return to the column function. If not, then we'll perform these operations. Once again, the else is not required because if if condition is true, we'll exit from here itself. If not, we will land to this line. So else will not be required in this case. So these are the function. Let's write these things in the form of the code. So let's write this, let's say this as the linear queue. Dot C. Since we may use the exit function, the stdlib.h declaration will be required here. So we first have to declare the structure of the queue. Let's say struct queue is here, and I'm writing the item array, which will be of some size. Let's say size is declared as a macro somewhere. Rare is one of the index. Then this is the another index. Both of these will be of integer type. Let's declare these as the means the size as let's say 10. So 10 is the size of the key. After this, I'll be writing some of the functions. For example, initialize function. Let's say we are declaring the object of this q as a global variable such that it can be used by any other function. So in the initialization, we will update the front at the zero index, or we will initialize the front at the zero index, and the rear will be initialized to minus one index. After this, we will have to perform the NQ operation. In the NQ operation, some element will be passed, and we will have to insert that item in the queue. So NQ function first checks about the overflow condition. So the overflow condition in this case will be if q dot rare has already reached to the last index, it means the maximum index the further inversion would not be possible. So we will print a message q overflows. Okay. And if it, if q does does overflow, then we'll prefer to exit. If Q does not uh, overflow, in that case, we will have to simply update the rear index by one, and then add the updated rear index in the item array. I will have to insert this element X. So this is a very simple function, the NQ, just to segregate all these things, we supply a segregation lines. So initialization function is done, NQ function is done. Now let's write the DQ function. In the DQ function, we'll delete an element and delete it. That deleted item will be returned also. So the return type of this function is going to be integer. So before deleting the item, we will have to check if the Q contains some element or not. So if rare minus Plus one is equals to zero, it means it contains zero element. It means Q underflows. And if Q underflows, then you will have to exit. If Q does not uh, underflow, in that case, you will have to save the front element from the Q in some variable. And then we will have to update the front to point at the next index. After this, you will return this X element. So X is the variable that you took from your side. You will have to declare this X variable there at the beginning. So we are done with the NQ, DQ, and the initialization function. Let's write the main.
So in the mail, you first need to call the initialize function. Initialize function will initialize the uh, queue given. And then let's call the NQ function to insert some of the elements. So let's say the first element that I'm going to insert is 10 or 100, let's say. After this, I'll call several NQ functions. So six NQ operations have been performed. And uh, if I perform the delete operation or the DQ operation at this point in time, then it should give us 100 because the first element which was deleted, so the first element which was inverted is 10, uh, 100. So let's call the DQ function. And you can then the DQ element or the element that you have deleted in the printf itself like deleted element is percentile D and call the DQ function here itself. So the item that you're expecting here is 100. If you want to print the another element after the deletion or another element as a part of the deletion, then you can call this function once again. So the two deletion functions back to back will return 100 and 200. Okay. Now let's uh, run this code and let's check if it contains any error or not. Okay. Undefined reference to initialize means there is some spelling error. Okay, so this function runs fine or this program runs fine. So let's check the output. So we are expecting that 100 and 200 will be printed and here comes 100 and 200 as a part of the deletion. Now let's uh, delete uh, some more times and uh, let's check if uh, our DQ and the NQ functions are working fine. If I delete the Q for seven times, then six times will get the items, but for in, on the seventh time, there will be the underflow. So yes, you can check that. Six times you have deleted the element and the elements were printed. Last time we have the underflow. If in the underflow, if I apply the slash n, then I think the things must be very clear to you. So six times you deleted the elements and you have found the answer. The order in which the insertion took place, in the same order the deletion is also taking place. And Q underflows is the answer when you are deleting the Q for the seventh time. Let's uh, check for the overflows also. So let's say we are not going to delete the element. We'll just invert the elements some more times. The size of the queue is 10. So let's perform the inversion 11 times. So 600 is done, 700 is done, 800 is done, 900 is done, 1000 is done. But when you invert 1100, the overflow should be printed. Yes, Q overflows because you are inverting 11 times, but you have the size of the Q as 10. So I think this code must be clear to you, wherein we have discussed about the linear Q and its programming. In the next lecture, we will come to explain the circular Q. Thanks for watching this video.